Hello, everybody. Yeah. Yes. How are we doing today? Good, 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 good. Um, I had a one of those little bugs that fly up your ass kind of thing about what to do a video about today. I was going to do a video about something completely different. And then because of, oh wow, hairs, um, the, the way th thoughts are processed and put together makes you um, think of other things. And so um, this video, um, I think I'm calling it um, Nine Ways to Be a Better Writer and to Better Wrestling um, or something like that. It's going to have some kind of thing like that. Um, there might be, <clears throat> um, yeah, backstory. Sorry, should have should have done this beforehand. Um, for those of you who know, um, I do have a fondness for professional wrestling, um, but my fondness is for um, older professional wrestling. And um, some of you who've been around for a long time have known this i've done videos here and there about it but um an opportunity arose for me to do something and so for the last couple weeks i've been trying to put together how to do said thing in the wrestling world and um i don't know if i can do it because i don't know if um wrestling itself and how wrestling is right now can do these things um so i made a list of all the things that if i got involved of what i would want to have happen and what i would want to do and all this other shit and um in doing it um i realized that this isn't just for wrestling this is for creating in general for writing novels for telling stories like it's all the same principles <clears throat> so um while there's a dog outside ready to kill things that walk by it um i thought would be now would be a good time to share some of these things with you <clears throat> So, and these aren't in any particular order. Um, I had actually a lot more um, things on here, but I thought nine would be good and um, we could kind of put it together um, in a sense. So a lot of the things I'm going to be talking to you about, um, when I first say them, they, it might not click as to how that would help with writing in general, but um, as... I talk about it, it will make more sense. So bear with me here. <clears throat> so one of the things is, is that a wrestling card needs to build. And this is probably, if you think of like the book you're writing or the manuscript you've already finished, if you like read through that <clears throat> and um, you feel like Maybe your middle's really good, but your end's kind of flat, and you don't really know why. The idea is, whatever you do, everything has to build up. So, like, when you go to a wrestling show, let's say, um, there will be matches, like, maybe, like, eight matches. If in the last match of that night... Um, it's going to end when you put somebody, or not you personally, but when one of the wrestlers puts another wrestler through a table and he's just, he can't continue because he's so hurt because he just went through a fucking table, okay? And you want to sell that and make that powerful and mean something. <clears throat> Earlier in the card, you can't have like five guys go through tables and then get right back up and continue going, Okay. And that is something that happens all the time now. Like, and it doesn't have to be tables. It could be anything. It could be um, getting just basically the stakes have to increase as you go. 
So if in the middle of your book you have some like big, huge battle, let's say, and all these crazy things happen and all these dudes die and all these, like whatever, like just some big crazy thing. And then at the end of your book, it's just like, oh, he sees the bad guy and then pulls out again and shoots him. <clears throat> and everyone lives happily ever after. That might fall flat if there was something bigger that contained more stakes that didn't even mean as much earlier on, if that makes sense. So when you're going through your manuscript, you have to make sure that, like, you know that graph, everyone has seen it if you've had any kind of writing class or anything like that. You have your rising action, your climax, and then your falling action, and that's the end of the story or whatever. So a lot of times now, especially on wrestling shows, you see, like, rising action, climax, rising action, climax, rising action, oh, oh, oh. It's all over the place. And so when you're watching a long form show, let's say, that has a bunch of different stuff in it, the peaks and valleys are so spread apart that nothing is cohesive. And if your book is the same way, that's going to be a problem. So um, make sure that you follow that very simple guideline. Um Another thing, um, and this was something I put in the thing, um, heels need to have managers. Now, um, some of you might not know what I'm talking about. So, like, um, the bad guys, they should have um, a spokesperson or a manager or um, somebody with them. Whereas the, the good guys, the faces, they really shouldn't. Because the whole idea here is, is you need to constantly be showing your audience that this dude is outnumbered. This dude is in peril. This dude can have, like, everything go his way and be better than the bad guy. But the bad guy has other people that he can turn to to trick people, to do other stuff, to distract a ref so somebody could do something else. This whole thing, it will constantly put your hero in peril, which will make the reader um, feel more sympathy for him and pull for him more. So, in the sense of writing a book or whatever, the big takeaway from this is is that you always need to have your hero in some kind of danger or peril, and even if it's not... Um, even if it's not to where you could tell what it is exactly right when it starts. There just has to be this like impending doom thing surrounding your hero to make people care if anything happens to him. And when you go that far with this, and I'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but stakes are important. Like, what does he have to lose? Like... If, if your hero, and when I say hero, I just mean your protagonist. If they don't do this thing they're supposed to do, what do they lose? Like, and what does the antagonist have to gain from making sure that the hero um, can't do what he's supposed to do? Um, so stakes are huge, and you always want to make it to where your hero is like, kind of punching up, like trying to get through to something. If your hero <clears throat> is like, and somebody asked a question about this a while back, like if you have like a superhuman hero or something like that, if they are like perfect, and a lot of people end up writing these like perfect characters where um, nothing can hurt them, like they're, impervious to pain they could do this they're super strong they're the most intelligent person in the world nothing gets by them <clears throat> it's really hard to make anyone give a shit about that character if they're always a step ahead like you have to have pitfalls and peril for your main character or else it'll be boring for the audience to look into 
Okay. Um, oh, okay. So I have a note in here that says no strong style. Um, I don't want to get into a big wrestling thing about what strong style is because it does have its place. Um, I just think there's way too much of it in wrestling right now. So the best way to illustrate this into writing is that when something happens to your character, to your protagonist, and they're injured, okay, they need to sell that injury throughout the rest of the book because, or throughout the rest of the script or whatever it is that you're writing. Because if somebody is hurt and then they don't sell it, like, what, how do I explain this? Like, okay, let's say, um, Okay, here's an example <clears throat> that just most people will know. And um, I don't even know if this is a good example. But, um, so, Empire Strikes Back. Everyone's like, Jesus fucking Christ, here we go. Um, sh like, spoiler alert here. Luke gets his hand cut off. Okay? Loses his hand. Um, that new, er, him getting his hand cut off is a big thing. And one of the things that made that even crazier is that he fell and was down this thing and was hanging on for dear life, but he only had one hand. Okay, so that whole sequence was him kind of selling the fact that um, he only had one hand. Now, if um, he wasn't hanging up in the sky like hundreds and hundreds of feet from the ground... Him losing his hand wouldn't have been that big of a deal. But because he lost his hand, and now he's hanging, um, that, like, adds stuff to it. And then they kind of screwed the pooch and just gave him a new hand. And so it's like, well, what the fuck is that? Like, um, when you do something to your character, have it linger, have it hang on. Because you have to show stakes. And if you don't have stakes... Why the fuck is anyone even reading your book? If anyone can get hurt and then the next chapter, everything's fine, um, then what the fuck does it matter what's going to happen? Because he's going to be fine. If um, something happens to your character that should put him in a hospital for a month and he just gets up and walks away or he's hurt for a couple pages and then just like no sells it after that and he's fine... It makes any possible thing that could happen to your character not mean as much. So you have to have stakes. And if your character, if something happens to him, and if, and if you read a lot of hard-boiled detective stuff, um, oh, March Mystery Madness, here you go, okay? Um, not all the time, but there are a lot of writers who write in this um, subgenre that when something happens to their hero that dude's fucked for the whole rest of the book. And like, if somebody broke his thumb or broke his finger, so he can't shoot his gun, like that's going to come up and he has to come up with another way to shoot that gun kind of thing to get the whole thing going. So, um, it helps basically. Okay. So, um, I have a bunch of notes about how things should be, um, Okay, let's go to this real quick. Well, let's hit this real quick. And this is going to be like four things all in one because it all kind of revolves. But everything should be telling a story. And, it, and, and you're like, yeah, no shit. But like a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. So everything in your story, even if it's a subplot, even if it's um, <clears throat> a relationship that your character has with one character that doesn't seem that important, that just comes in maybe once or twice. Every single story inside your story should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Okay? Um, making everything logical, making it make sense, um, the psychology of how a story is told, and everything should be taken seriously in that. Like, don't, like, half-ass something 
because it's not the main part of your story. Everything in your story should be taken seriously when you're writing it. And a lot of you are probably going, yeah, no shit. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, no shit. But if you were to read your story again or read your book again um, and go through it <clears throat> and try to look at it in the sense like, does everything in this make sense? Does Do all the things in here happen logically like is is it point a to point b and even if it's like a supernatural thing or like a science fiction thing there still needs to be like going from point a to point b and have it make sense in how you do it and i think the best way to do this and i fail at doing this because i have no patience but um <clears throat> like beta readers is a really good way to do this but when you give your book to a beta reader um, or a group of beta readers you kind of need to have questions because if you don't you're going to give your book to beta readers and say like read this let me know what you think and they're going to go this was good i enjoyed this or i really liked billy in this story like you need to be able to say like <clears throat> do the subplots make sense do um like did the arc that happened was it logical did everything tie up like you need to be able to hit these people and ask them specific questions and it's also good to throw those questions at them before they even read it so they're looking for it as they go because the problem we have a lot as creators is that we are so close to stuff we cannot objectively look at how something goes so um, that is something that you want to do. Um, let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> uh, so one gimmick, <clears throat> one gimmick matches show. Okay, if you have, um, and since this was brought up because of wrestling, if you have like a steel cage match. <clears throat> Um, obviously you don't want to put that on at the beginning of your show, which people sometimes do. That is something that, that should be a big deal. And again, we're, I'm, I'm trying to talk about this in the sense of trying to keep an audience in a building to watch this thing and how to make their emotions go up and down and up and down to where it gets higher and higher and higher. If you have, and there's tons of promotions that, are guilty of this but if you have a cage match and that's going to be your big like title match at the end of the night in a cage um before that you don't want to have a ladder match and before that you don't want to have a dog collar match and before that you don't want to have um i don't know uh pour someone in cement match i don't know if that's a thing but what i'm saying is the more gimmicky things you do the more it takes away from the fact that this one thing was a gimmick in the first place um, and it loses its effect it loses its punch because there's been so many other weird different things and especially if you had like two cage matches I'm talking to you WWE having like two cage matches on the same show like totally kills the like awe of the cage match in the first place you like you won't have the pops you get from the second match that you would with the first match because they've already seen it now so how this would relate into writing is like if you're writing a book let's say um it's just like some kind of thriller, let's say. And at the end of the book, you want to have this thing where um, the hero and the antagonist are fighting on a moving roller coaster. And they're like climbing over the seats and the roller coaster's doing all this stuff. And they're shooting at each other and it's all crazy and weird. And it's like, they're going to go in a loop to loop in a minute and they're not even hanging on like something's going to happen. If you had that, but then right before that, the exact same thing played out 
in a car chase on a freeway and they were climbing over cars and shooting at each other and there was like some big um uh connection to a freeway and it was like kind of sideways and all this other stuff if you do the exact same thing but in a different setting um that's going to lose a lot of the appeal that you're trying to get built up at the end and um this is also called hot shotting where you like basically do every crazy thing you could possibly do to try to get people in the door but then people will get burnt out so you have to be able to like kind of spread this stuff out and a lot of you might be going dude i write action suspense thrillers and it's like this the whole time and if that's the case then that's the case and like if that's what you're gonna hang your hat on you can do that because guess what? Even with wrestling right now, there are a lot of companies that hotshot the shit out of everything. And it's like this the whole time, you know? So um, their numbers are dwindling um, and have been for 20 fucking years, but, you know, um, you're going to do what you're going to do. So it's fine. But I'm just trying to explain to you how to make... Um, something have more impact you know if you could like make people remember like if there's so many things that happen in your book that like when someone's done they're not going oh my god that roller coaster bit like i if they're like oh yeah there that was so much stuff happened yeah but they they're not even going to be able to remember. Like, you'll have to, like, go, but what about that bit? And they'll go, oh, yeah, 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 that bit was cool. But if you don't have, like, that thing in it that leaves an impression that burns into somebody's head, it's going to be hard for them to remember all the other shit. I think I said that backwards, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Okay, and finally, let's, let's fucking end this thing. This is getting stupid. Um... Okay, yeah, let's just do that. Through lines. Um, <clears throat> I've read this a lot. I, I've seen this a lot in um, in work by really famous writers and um, in writers who it's their first book. Okay, <clears throat> there are important things that happen in a book. And they assume that because they talked about it on page 32, that that important thing that's going to be a key element to something that happens later <clears throat> will be remembered perfectly by page 315. So with that said, you need to remind the reader of the important things that they're supposed to know or else your big twist or your big payoff for one of these little things that you dropped a clue for uh, uh, two and a half hundred pages ago won't hit it won't sink in and there are times when i've i have a book and i thought i was being clever as fuck and i just like sprinkled a little something in here a little Chekhov's gun just sprinkled it and then by the time the payoff happened and I asked people who read it like oh what you think about that they're like oh shit I totally forgot about that until you just said that I had no idea I hid that secret so well that the fucking reader missed it if your reader's missing your big clues and your big secrets you're trying too hard. Don't do that. Make it a little bit easier for them to find it. Okay? The person reading your book isn't Sherlock Holmes. The person reading your book is someone who wants to read a Sherlock Holmes book. They are not Sherlock himself. Um, they're more like Watson, maybe. Okay? So we need to make sure that everything is um, out there for them. So they could like pick it up and do what they want with it. That is our job. We are telling stories. And the only way you can tell stories and have that work for you and actually like take care of you for the rest of your life is if the stories you tell resonate with the people who are reading it. And if you're being so fucking clever that your readers don't pick up on your fucking clues, then you fucking did it wrong. Okay? 
Your your readers are not masterminds. They're just reading a fucking book. They just want to be entertained. Okay? So make sure that whatever the through lines are, the, the twists, the Chekhov's guns, the MacGuffins, the roly polies, the magical jelly beans, the Empire State Buildings, whatever these things are, they're important to your story from the beginning of the book to the end of the book, even if the reader isn't supposed to know it's important yet, you have to keep bringing it up or make it fucking really fucking obvious. Just continue the through line so when they get to the payoff, it like makes sense to them. And it's like, it feels like they're like, oh shit, I remember all of these things. Or even better yet, I wonder if this magical flute will pay off at the climax of this story. And then when it does, they're like, oh my god, I knew it. I found out. I knew that the magical flute was going to be involved in this somehow. And they feel like they fucking, like, cured cancer. Okay? So, don't be too cute and don't be too clever. And you have to keep having that shit go through. So anyway, this video is longer than I wanted it to be. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about anything or comments or um, things to add to this little bit right here, um, please leave a comment down below and let me know. Oh, it's March still. It's my birthday month. All my chapbooks, like this one here, shit poems. These are all on sale on my Etsy shop, and I still have a free ebook over at my website, IHateMattWall.com. Links for everything will be down below. Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions about anything like here. And I will talk to you guys later.